Hey, I'm Tass Mellis, and this is what you need to know in the NBA for Monday, January 11th. The first thing you need to know is that the Clippers' Kawhi Leonard is finally looking like his old basketball-dominating self. He's looking that way because he finally got to remove that mask he's been wearing for a couple weeks since being hammered in the face by his teammate Serge Ibaka. He hated that thing. It's really hard to tell if Kawhi Leonard hates anything, but he very much hated that mask he was wearing. Took it off for the first time, had 35 points against the Bulls on Sunday. That's a season high. He had seven threes that tied a career high. He looked great in that third quarter when he had 21 points, and he has surpassed 10,000 points for his career. This is his 10th year in the league. He's 29 years old, just a reminder. And they need Kawhi to be that great because they lost on Friday when they had a 22-point lead late in the third against the Warriors, looking like that Clippers team in the playoffs last year against the Nuggets that gave up that 3-1 lead. This was Kawhi's quote after that loss. We just have to change, pretty much. We've got to change it. We've got to get better. I agree. One guy who has been playing amazingly well, I don't know if he can get any better, is Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls. He hit 10 threes on Sunday against the Clippers. 45 big ones in a loss. Coming off a 38-point night, he is averaging 34 over his last five games. Levine balling, although the Bulls now sit at 4-7. and seven. Speaking of Raptor greats like Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Lowry reached in on the Warriors' Damian Lee when he was shooting with four seconds left. The Raptors had this game until Damian Lee sold that little quick grab from Kyle Lowry. And man, can Damian Lee sell because the referee had no idea Kyle Lowry was grabbing Lee. He was behind the play, but referees, man, they can see things the human eye cannot. The right call, wraps go the other way. Pascal Siakam's shot rims out. Although Pascal Siakam has started to look like his all NBA self the last few games. I bring this game up because I want to talk about Kyle Lowry briefly. The Raptors are now two and seven as Kyle Lowry nears 35 years old in a couple months. And Masai Ujiri never been shy about making a shrewd move. If they have to tear it up, I think Masai Ujiri will. Now, I I say tear it up. I just mean trade Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, the best Raptor in franchise history. If he wants to go somewhere else midway through his 30s, if this team continues to go sideways the way it's going, maybe Lowry moves on. Maybe it's a conversation between Lowry and Masai Ujiri. I don't know. Either way, Lowry writes his own ticket. If he wants to stay in Toronto, the Raptors will enjoy him. If he wants to leave, he leaves. Although the Raptors will miss his hilarity as he made Steph Curry chortle after the game. They had a little brief talk. I think it was Kyle Lowry saying, hey, your brother-in-law really sold that freaking call, huh? Always be closing. Toronto struggling. Moving on to the only other city I've ever lived in, Atlanta. I am officially a curse. The Atlanta Hawks season going kind of sideways right now as well. They had a fantastic offseason, but all those players are now injured, including Bogdan Bogdanovich, acquired from the Kings. A right knee avulsion has set him back. He'll be evaluated later this week, but it doesn't sound like his absence is going to be short. And he joins the injury list with Danilo Gallinari, a right ankle sprain. Rajon Rondo, right knee maintenance. He's going to be out a while. Chris Dunn hasn't played a minute for this team. Either has their number six pick, Onyeka Onkongwu. But I think the biggest worry for this Atlanta Hawks team who have lost four in a row, is that their leader, Trey Young, does not look like himself whatsoever. He is just not being aggressive, Trey Young. There's a fantastic article in The Athletic last week which outlined a film session where John Collins voiced his displeasure with how Trey Young specifically was running the offense. This team that started so well just is not looking right. Trey Young has got to be more aggressive. He's got to be Trey Young. Hawks head coach Lloyd Pierce It's got a big task to bring this team together that's lost four in a row. Although the shorthanded Philadelphia 76ers play the Hawks on Monday. So maybe the Hawks can get a W there and right the ship. Because the Sixers, due to COVID-related issues and injuries, they don't have a lot of guys right now. They only dressed eight on Saturday against the Nuggets, which is the league minimum. They played seven, though, because one of those guys, Mike Scott, was actually injured. They lost to the Nuggets on Saturday. Hopefully, some bodies come back for Doc Rivers and the Sixers against Atlanta. 
Some more COVID-related news. Jason Tatum has tested positive for the virus. Definitely the biggest NBA name who's contracted the virus this season. He'll be out 10 to 14 days. And his team had their game canceled on Sunday. The Boston Celtics and Miami Heat's game was postponed. It wasn't because the Celtics didn't have enough guys. It was because Miami lacked the minimum eight players to play because of ongoing contact tracing. The Celtics were ready to go with eight players, the league minimum, after nine of their players were ruled out, but the NBA decided to postpone it. This is the second game this season, which has been canceled. More COVID-related news. Bradley Beal missed his game on Saturday because he had a conversation with Jason Tatum on Friday night. Wizards lost. They're now 2-8. and eight. Terrible news for them in this one. Starting center Thomas Bryant's season ended because of a torn left ACL. And who knows how long Bradley Beal will be out. They've got a tough sked ahead. Monday, they get the four real Phoenix Suns. And Wednesday, they get the Utah Jazz. One team that has been hit by the COVID tracing bug pretty hard, the Dallas Mavericks. Some good news for them. Kristaps Porzingis, who hasn't played a game this season, is listed as questionable for the first time for Monday's game. And he's being included in the Mavs likely starters in the team's media notes. Whatever that means, it looks like he's going to play. Last thing I wanted to say is that NBA players, you got to learn that you can't move DeMarcus Cousins. It is impossible. What are you trying here, Markeith Morris? Players have tried in the past. You can't move him. Just like you can't take me off the no dunks full show. I'll be there on Monday to talk about Nikola Jokic doing something special. Doing something an NBA center has never done in the history of the league. I'll be here with you tomorrow to tell you the news as fast as I possibly can. I'll see you then.